Okay, so added one information is about this present this talk is focus on mobile platforms. Why? Because usually um, the platform needing a good control of all the power, tamal, and performance things is Android. And Android, as you might know, has a lot of different custom code. And there is no unified ABI to act on the different uh, aspect of the power management of each devices. And so it's very hard to write any generic code because each platform has its own solutions. And one of these solutions we can find we can find in some platforms hundreds of cooling devices. And when you look closely what they are doing, they are just hacking around different um, devices. And the cooling devices are there not necessarily to, to tie it with a three point or an, an thermal zone, but just for the sake of giving um, an, an API, an ap so an API to be used by the, by the user space. So obviously it's platform specific, and behind that the user space is specific too. So it's not possible to write any kind of generic library using this PM uh, GNOBs existing in these platforms. So I, I, I guess the point, the main point is that the cooling, cooling devices should be used for thermal, thermal control and specifically and not for other purposes which they are used for actually. Right. For example, we find cooling devices where you can specify the current of a, a battery. So the cooling device is the battery, and then you can specify the current for the battery. It's the cooling also, state. I, I guess it, it works the way that you, you set a cooling state because the, <laughs> so uh, maybe as a matter of introduction, the uh, cooling devices are exposed through SysFS to user space. Uh, in particular, there is an interface to set the cooling state of a cooling device from user space via SSFS. And that's what people use to control the devices, uh, not necessarily for thermal control purposes, but for any purpose. <laughs> like they use a cooling device interface to set brightness on screens, they said the cooling device interface to control the battery, uh, the frame rate, uh, the frame rate, the other other things through cooling states, bias because there is a SSFS interface and it's easy to use, essentially. I mean, those things do at least examples you gave. They do affect the temperature, thermal characteristics, right? More frames per second is more heat. Higher charging current is more, so I don't see those as necessarily wrong examples. But they are not used for cooling, they are used for controlling brightness, for example. Yeah, brightness also affects the heat. Yeah, but the, the point is not to cool down things, but to set the brightness to a specific level, which is not, <laughs> not exactly the, the right use of the interface. Yeah, so that's, that's the sign that something is missing in the kernel. So if people is forced to use this framework, which is not uh, the right one, then that means there is something missing <coughs> the kernel. And so what do we have today to act on the uh, power? We have power interfaces, the power cap and DTPM. So basically with that, we can get and set the power of specific device. The battery is a good candidate for that because battery is able to read uh, the power consumption. You have an API through the power supply. You can read the power consumption of the battery. And you can also set um, a power uh, a charging limit for that. So it's a good candidate to, to be added to the power interface. So the user space won't have to go through the cooling device 
They can go directly act on the power capping interface. Um, and if there is really a need to tie a thermal zone with a cooling device, if this cooling device is power capable, so being able to enter in the category of power capping, then it will be quite easy. Yeah, Rafael? Okay, so, so one more comment on this. So cooling states uh, are defined the way that the, the higher the state, the more cooling is applied. Uh, in some cases, uh, Daniel is talking about the higher the states, the, the more power is used. So less cooling is applied. So it works kind of in reverse as with, with respect to what is supposed to be doing. So this is the main problem, I think, here, that the cooling state should be should represent the level of, you know, of, of activity in order to pull the temperature down, not in order to pull the temperature up. So if we have, if we can categorize the different devices and put, for example, all poor capable devices inside this poor capping framework, then it's quite easy to do a connection between the thermal framework and the power capping framework by creating a generic power capable uh, cooling device. So the, um, the thermal framework won't have to write every time a new cooling device. We just have to declare, to declare the power capable device as a cooling device too and do the connection. That could be quite easy. It's just just a, a, a side comment. Side yeah, so, so this is already a case for HW1, right? HW1. Power monitoring. Yeah. The, 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 there is already automatically happening in, in, in that framework. Right? So um, another category is the performance interfaces. Um, what we have today is we have CPU frec, we have def frec, which is exported in CFS, with minimum frequency and maximum frequency, with different formats depending on CPU and def frec. But on the other side, we have PMQS uh, for slash dev doing these um, min and max frequencies. We have unit used instead of frequencies. Um, there is something called uh, summing PMQS, so it's a way to, um, to I didn't really understood the, uh, the purpose of this QS, but basically it's just giving the, the sum of the, the performance uh, for a specific device. And also they are putting temporary constraints, so you can set a performance capping for a device and then it's auto automatically removed after, after a while. So the idea here is, yeah, let's provide a performance capping with QS so we can connect all the different framework together because when you are doing power capping, you are also doing performance capping. And um, on the other side, it's the same. If you are doing performance capping, you also do power capping. So if a, if a, a component is able to export performance knobs and power knobs, then we have we need a connection between both. And using QS, it's a way to make them to translate from one system to another system easily. The goal is to unify the interfaces and the units used by all the devices. We would like also to add a constraint timeout, so you can set performance capping for a specific device and just it will automatically be removed. We find this kind of usage in OSP. In the power, for example, in the power agile, we have a temporary constraint, so we set a constraint and it, will, it is removed after, after, um, after a while. Um, we would like also to have a notification when we have a constraint change. So if some, someone else is changing the constraint, reducing the max, for example, or the mean, we want to be aware of that because user space might want this notification 
to do something, I don't know what, but somehow he has to be um, uh, informed about this change. Uh, there is an initial proposal about that, uh, where I have the link here. And the, the proposal here is just providing a few interfaces. So we have performance normal mean. So that means it's, it's, the content is normalized values. And these non-normalized values are between 0 and 100, uh, 1,023, which is the, the common way to specify um, normalized values in the kernel. Uh, it's a require file. So if we provide a device doing performance capping, then we have to provide these files. Then we provide also performance normalized mapping. So we do a mapping between the, perform the frequency, which is all usually when we are performance, we have operating point performance. So we use this frequency. So it's easy from user space to have information about at which frequency a specific device is running, at, uh, at what normalized value. And then, as we can have devices using the KBPS um, value to set the performances, we can also provide this interface with the same idea where you can have the KBPS map giving what is the, um, the, um, the normalized value given the KBPS. I think we can put that under the power directory. Would make sense for the device. So, so why why do we need a, the normalized when we gave give a, a kilobytes per second or in addition to it? Why, why is it necessary to have both? Like, why is it necessary to have both uh, kilobytes per second and normalized? Uh, I would say that's. <laughs> I would say it's um, if you have a user space library and the user space just want to use normalized value. And I compute it from, from yeah, the Yeah, you have one. to compute every time. If you, because here the, K, the KBPS, it's, um, uh, you tie the KB, KBPS map with the with the normalized value. So normalized value is uh, the mand mandatory one, the required one. KBPS, if the device is able to do also KBPS, it can export this information too. I mean, uh, so th these are the interfaces you want to provide in SysFS for them to control, is that? For each device. Right. For each so, device. Are you also open to adding more and more unit types? Or you're saying it's only KBPS and normalized? I think this two is enough. That's when, like, okay, I, then I'm kind of like leaning towards what Rafael is saying. Because you, could, you can always imagine up another unit, which is a measurement of performance, like IOPS, right? Like, uh, and if you're using SD card, IOPS is like a number of random accesses per second or whatever that is. All your operations per second. Like they're going to propose that as the next one. Like I don't see really point in doing this, and I think we just use the normalized one. KBPS is a unit you can find on on uh, different platforms specifying for the for the operating points. Uh, 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 right. So so my concern with KBPS is is generally that it that there are, this is a throughput uh, throughput uh, unit. And it doesn't apply to all the types of <clears throat> performance control, um, which may also cover latency. Um, so you may not be able to represent everything in KBPS, but then you can measure throughput in other units as well, like, I don't know, frame rates or, or similar or packet rates. Or or what not, and then the question is why KBPS? What's special about KBPS? You can convert uh, frame rate in KBPS, no? Yeah, but then you can convert it the other way around. So you know, yeah. they are all just throughput units, and 
So I don't know, but yeah, okay, let's continue because I I I, we can put first no normalized values and then we see uh, we see the need for more units. Perhaps one one like the remark or one observation is that you may need, you may uh, need to be able to compare the, uh, the units for the, the the values for different devices, and then uh, the normalized unit for one device may not be in the the same as the normalized unit for the other device. Uh, so and they, then they they become hard to compare, and we need to think about this a bit. But that's. Yeah, um, again, I guess it depends on the intended usage of these interfaces. If it's mainly for standardizing thermal and whatnot, I think then the normalized is good. But if you're trying to do more than this, just that, then yeah, I agree, normalized wouldn't be enough. So it really depends on your goal here. I haven't looked at the series yet. Is, I'm assuming this is these are just new PMQOS types. You're not adding some new SysFS interface. You're, you're adding new PMQOS types. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so question is, shall we put all these files in the power directory, or should we have a performance directory? Well, that, that's part of my question. If you're if you're adding them as PMQoS knobs, then they're just going to end up under the device nodes that exist already. You can exp with PMQoS, you can expose each type per device to user space with the existing like export function. So they they will already show up under each device. Right? You don't need a you don't need a brand new a new set of uh, files under SysFS. You shouldn't. Oh, uh, this, the, the, so the question is if this is going to be used for controlling performance. Device performance, right. Be because in that case, uh, putting that into, uh, into PMQOS is sort of confusing. A bit, right? No? Well, so yes and no, <laughs> because uh, if, 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 you, if you want to uh, control performance for the, for the power management purpose, then yes. Uh, but otherwise... Yeah, okay. Okay. So... <clears throat> Assuming that we put all, uh, we have all these files in the de per device in the power directory, that means the user space will have to go through all the devices and check if this file exists in order to say, okay, this device can do that, this device can do that. That can be, can be a bit complicated and prone to error, so I'm wondering if it makes sense to create a sys class perf cap uh, along with uh, sys class power cap, where we can have just links to devices allowing to do performance capping. So the user space just have to list the devices inside this directory to, to have the list of the devices capable of, of doing that. At least with what I understand, for you to have folders under sys class perf cap, you need a struct class, and you need to add devices to that class for them to show up under, and they won't be symlinks. You cannot generate symlinks under perf cap. So you'll be forced to create a struct device just to do this. You can always link from somewhere else to these, but not the other way around. Okay. So you'll be just creating struct devices for this. I don't think it's worth it. So I think overall we need to we need to think about use cases. I mean, the, uh, what is, which, by the way, was the was the uh, the main uh, like comment on the on the series that you posted. It's like, well, uh, <laughs> what what this is going to be used for? 
uh, and they and, and and still still this needs to be answered. Like, what's the use case you want to use it for? Uh, and they. Um, so I don't know. Let's let's focus on the brightness example, okay? Because that's easy one. So how you think the uh, user space and IT uh, would use this control interface for brightness control? The brightness <laughs> controller is it does not from from my point of view it does not go in this category. Uh, all right. So maybe the example is not right then. But yeah, again. So this is like Saravana for to your point. This is one example of performance control that is not not power management related, right? Brightness control. Because brightness is about, you know, a usability mostly. Yeah, I mean, it's still a performance, you want to be bright enough. Yeah, right, but this is not about, you know, the, this is because you want to want, want it to be brighter because it, it, you, you, you want it to adjust to your, like, uh, uh, your uh, reception of the, of the image. But, uh, so that, that, that is, to me, it is mostly about thinking like, what is the goal of doing this? So the goal of doing this is, you, um, I have a couple of use cases, um, common use cases in OSP. When you have, depending on the kind of application you run. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So we are we, we are going over. So we can, we have the my, my, maybe let's just let's just take the discussion offline and then continue there. We have the the, the buff. Yeah, we have the buff. So yeah, tomorrow at, at the noon. So everybody interested is welcome to join. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, shall, shall I? Yeah. So are we going in ten uh, in ten seconds through the remaining slides? Well, I just notifications. So. It's, um, the proposal is just sending few events and there are changes. Um, when there is a change of a minimum and maximum performance. So I, I think let's just defer it to the buff tomorrow and then let the other topics run uh, right now. And then, yeah, because, you know, it, it always like, Depends on the answer on the use case question, right? Okay, okay cool. Thank you.